Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and I'm an adjunct professor at Duke. Uh, I'm also an executive in residence there, and I specialize in data science and cloud computing. And today I'm gonna to be giving a talk on Hugo uh, helping humans at scale through continuous delivery on AWS. One of the topics I'm extremely passionate about is re-looking at technology and taking a different lens where we look at the stakeholders. Uh, I think the last 10, 20 years, we've seen that there has been really this idea that startups are, are only good, technology is only good, but then we look at the effects on society, uh, people believing things that aren't true, that are clearly uh, easy to debunk, uh, you know, problems with getting people vaccines. Uh, there, there's been this proliferation of misinformation and disinformation, and there's been this metric of user growth and engagement as and, and revenue, right, as the or valuation as the things that we value in society. But I think it's time that other parts of our society fight back and we and we use our own resources to spread actual true information true facts and one of the ways you can do this is by using a technology like hugo hugo is open source it's easy to deploy you don't have to pay anything to a hosting provider if you don't want to you can do it all yourself with your own two hands and you can actually spread accurate meaningful information at a global scale so you could build a website as big as the wall street journal uh, or the New York Times yourself and actually have a bunch of facts that continuously get deployed into a production-based environment. So that's really my my challenge for people that are listening to this are that you can actually create a difference in the world by spreading uh, information and Hugo could be one of the vehicles that you use. So I'm going to go through and walk step-by-step uh, step through some of the processes that I've used personally uh, for websites with Hugo. And I challenge you to try to make the world a better place by spreading true and, f and facts uh, throughout the, the, the world and making humanity better. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at this Hugo static site process here of continuous delivery on AWS. Uh, and really, let's start at the beginning here. First, on the source code section, what we could do is develop a local server workflow. And this could be in an environment like either AWS Cloud9 or potentially uh, GitHub Codespaces or some other cloud-based environment, maybe the Google Cloud, Azure Cloud. Uh, it could be your, your desktop as well. I personally prefer to use cloud-based development environments. And I would go through and get this running locally. First, making sure that I've got everything set up, that I've actually got everything that would uh, be deployed in the cloud-based environment running in my my uh, environment that's a mimic of this. And this is really what the Cloud9 environment does. It's an exact replica of the kind of environment that I would run later. Now, once I've gone through and I've pushed my code into GitHub, uh, I can actually listen via the build server. And the build server would go through here and actually trigger a new deploy process every time a change is made in GitHub. Now, the great uh, thing about this process is that with the AWS Cloud9 environment, obviously I can push the code in, test the changes locally with a local Hugo server here and make sure everything looks right. Or if there's small content-based changes, I can just edit directly from GitHub and those changes uh, can automatically be deployed. And here's where we get into the AWS code build process. And the AWS code build process, uh, what it will do is it could create an item potent uh, infrastructure command. Now, it could be in C Sharp, uh, which is a language I like. It could also be in Python, which is another language I like. It could be in TypeScript. You could basically uh, programmatically control the deployment in an item potent way. And what this means is that every time you make a change, it'll always be the exact same change. Uh, no matter how many times you deploy. So you know that your website is in a solid condition, potentially read-only, so that no one could ever break into it. You would then go through and build your Hugo site, sync those files directly into this S3 environment, uh, and then this would be really the basis of your website. The only thing left to do would be to have Route 53 lock into the uh, bucket and then also talk to the AWS CloudFront, which is the CDN. And the beautiful thing about this workflow is you can deploy everything within just a few seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would do this. Okay, let's take a look here at my personal website, noagift.com. I can move this down a little bit. 
And in general, the idea here is that whenever I want to continuously deploy this website, all I need to do is go over to my GitHub repo here, look at the repo that has my code in it, no GIF website, and I can just, if I want, edit directly inside of this website, add content, courses, whatever it is, I'm building it out, and it automatically will deploy this into the website up here. So this is really the beauty of, of how this works. In fact, just to let you know how simple it is to make a change, uh, I can actually even edit potentially the readme itself and just say, you know, uh, bump deploy. And if we go through here and we bump the deploy, I didn't make any content changes, but it'll trigger the build. Code build. You can see that it's deploying successfully and that if I select this, this process is going through and, and, and building out uh, in real time exactly what's happening inside of my, my project. So this is one of the really nice things about using this continuous deployment uh, process. And I type in you know, a gift, here we go. We can see this was just deployed uh, recently, <laughs> latest build, and I could even start it again manually if I wanted to. Uh, and I could even look at the logs in detail uh, which is which is kind of neat and, th and this is going to show us step by step what to do So how do I do this uh, on my own if, if somebody else wanted to reproduce what I did? Well to start off with I would recommend going into AWS here and creating a new environment. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this Hugo And then uh, inside of here uh, I like fast machines, so I'm gonna select a slightly bigger machine uh, here, so it'll be uh, a little bit responsive. So 16 gigs of RAM, eight CPU, that looks good. Uh, we'll use Amazon Linux because that's what the AWS code build will use. And notice that it'll time out after 30 minutes for me. Uh, and uh, go ahead and create this. And now what's great is that I can start developing in identically the same environment that the build system that will push the code to S3 will actually use. And this is a huge advantage of the AWS Cloud9 environment, and it's actually a very good environment to build in. All right, so uh, we've got this thing set up here, and a few different things to point out is that I have a shell, right, and uh, this is a bash-based shell, and uh, it can do really anything that a regular AWS environment can do uh, because I have the credentials set up here automatically in a role-based privileges. So I can actually interact with the AWS ecosystem and even sync my Hugo site directly there. So, all right, let's go over here to Hugo to the latest release, go down and grab a 64-bit tar file. Let's go ahead and say copy link address and then go back to this environment. Go ahead and say wget, pull it down locally. Now I just need to uncompress this thing. There we go. And now uh, it's really just a one-liner. I can just say sudo cp hugo. Let's go ahead and put hugo into user local bin. Perfect. Now that it's inside of there, uh, if I if I go ahead and I remove the rest of this stuff inside of my environment, so I'll remove hugo or remove hugo uh, the uh, tar file, and I type in which hugo. We can see that user local bin Hugo, type in Hugo version, here we go. And we, we got the latest version of Hugo. Now, uh, what the next thing that I would recommend to do is actually go to the quick start here and let's follow the quick start guide. So pretty easy to, to get started with it. Uh, we can say this, Hugo new site, there we go. That worked out pretty well. Make this a little bit bigger. So we've got this new site here Notice the structure, we have the content, we have the themes, the config file, all that stuff. Now we'll wanna go ahead and follow exactly what they say, which is let's go ahead and CD into that quick start directory. And let's go ahead and say get init as well. And then finally, let's go ahead and add a theme so we can copy this part. There we go. Now that we've added the theme, we can actually echo it into the config, into the config file, which will allow us to run it. And now we can just type in um, really the last step, which is to add a new post. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's type in new post. Perfect. 
Now, if I go to content, I go to posts, the big thing to do as a takeaway is that we want to make it not a draft because those won't publish. We'll say false. And then we'll also say here, hello world. Hello world. And then uh, we're, we're pretty close to being able to run. We would just type in Hugo serve, uh, I believe, dash D, and this will serve it out. Now, to test it out, there's a couple of different ways to approach this. I would just open up a new shell first, so say new terminal, and just curl the address that shows up, which is localhost 1313. And we can see that it's, in fact, running, and Hugo uh, is, is still running, building, everything's working uh, properly. Now, one of the things that we can do, though, to fully view everything that's happening is to go into our other environment here. Let's go ahead and uh, go to AWS. And let's go ahead and go to EC2. And let's actually open it up so that we can see what's happening. And so uh, in this case, if I look at the Hugo deploy here, this is the website uh, hosting uh, environment that I'm working in currently and we can see this is the public IP address but we can't access it because AWS is secure by default so what we'll need to do is go to security go into the security details here go into the group and scroll down to edit inbound rules and we'll add a rule that says custom uh, 00 and for port 1313 and this will allow anybody to uh, go through and view our website remote, which is what we want. And the only other thing we'll need to do is make sure that we have the right IP address. That's one thing. And I can go ahead and replace this right here and put in 1313, but it won't run yet because of the fact that we need to tell Hugo itself to bind uh, to that port. So we'll have to do dash dash bind equals, and we'll have to go ahead and say, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 0. and if we run that and we go back we should have our Hugo set running and notice here's the hello world uh, latest post here now if we want to change it in real time very straightforward to do because I'm inside of cloud nine we can say this is from cloud nine save it notice it automatically builds it we go back here look automatically updates our website. So this is a, a, an amazing workflow that is, is really easy to get started with and to, vel to develop your code locally. Now, if you wanted to then go to the next step, like I did, all you need to do is push it to a GitHub repository like I'm doing right here. Let's go ahead and walk through some of the things that I did. So I have my content, everything's the same over here. I have my theme, all this. And really the secret sauce here is this buildspec.yaml file. This does the majority of the work. And let's go ahead and see what are the things that I do. So I copy the latest Hugo release or the one that I was using at the time I built this. I do similar things to what I did in this environment. I then go ahead and say Hugo, which builds the website. And then I sync the code by using AWS S3 sync command uh, to my bucket, which is the same as my name. This is really a key here to get Route 53 working. I then uh, do a replace of all my content. I do a cache and validation for CloudFront, which is the CDN. And it's really just those three steps, AWS S3 Sync, uh, and go through and do the cache control replace, and then go through here and do a, a cache invalidation. Now, uh, how would we actually go through and, and take a look at this in the real world? If we go through here and we look at Amazon S3 here, let's look at the website that I've got set up. It says publicly available or accessible. We have properties. And if we scroll down, what are the things that make it happen? One is that I've enabled this feature of AWS, static website hosting. Very easy to do. You just say edit. Once you've done this, you can take this bucket website endpoint and you go to route 53 and you just add that into your route 53 address which uh, it, it is actually inside of here if you wanted to uh, play around with it and, and look at it you can look at the service route 53 and actually configure that yourself the only other thing that is is probably important to be aware of is that you have to create a bucket policy and so in this particular environment here 
The other thing to be aware of that I did was under the permissions, uh, I have actually a policy that's a read-only policy. This lets people read the, the access to, to my website. Once I've got these two things set up, uh, the policy and the static website hosting that's linked to Route 53, the only other thing that we would need to do is go over to Cloud9 and 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 uh, and and I'm sorry into Code Build and make sure that Code Build is actually building out our our project. So you'd say go ahead and create a new build project. And a few things to point out in this build project would be that you would want to point it to where your code lives. It could live in any of these locations: S3, Code Commit. I would probably recommend GitHub. Uh, go ahead and select a managed image. I would say use Amazon Linux 2 because that's the same as the environment that we're building in. Go ahead and select the latest runtime. And uh, we're not using Docker, so you don't need to do this, but you would need to select a, uh, a new service role in IAM that has the ability to copy data into S3 as well as communicate with CloudFront. So this is something to be aware of. In order to do that, you would need to go over to the uh, IAM system. And if we go down here and we go to the um, the IAM system here, let's type in IAM. Uh, let's go to all services I, I, and go to IAM. The IAM system is where you could actually go ahead and create a role that would actually allow you to do that build process. Finally, you would use the buildspec.yaml file, and this would actually allow you to push the, the configuration change to production and continuously deploy your code. One last thing I'll point out is once you go down here to whatever repo, notice that you should select Git Submodule. All right, that's it. That's all we have to do to get Hugo working in your uh, AWS continuous delivery environment. Let's go ahead and recap the steps. So step one would be make sure you have an AWS account, launch a Cloud9 environment. Step two is I would set up your GitHub communication, so create some keys. We didn't go over that, but it's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, once you've done that, go ahead and download the latest Hugo file. In this case, I, I downloaded the, the latest version and uncompressed it and copied it into user local bin. Once you've done that, go ahead and create a new site with the quick start guide. Uh, add the sub modules that will give you the Hugo theme and then go ahead and run it locally and do a curl to make sure it's working. Then go over to the security groups. Make sure that you open up the port uh, 1313. Uh, so that you can actually uh, expose it to uh, 000, then go back, make sure that you can uh, do that workflow. Once you've got that working, that could be your development environment, and you can go back and forth and get it, get it running locally and get the site exactly the way you'd like. Then simultaneously, I would go over to AWS S3, uh, create a static uh, hosting uh, scenario there, so you can go ahead and follow the official documentation for AWS. There's a very good uh, how-to guide on how to set up the permissions correctly. Uh, and then actually from Cloud9, you could even just copy those files over there if you wanted to. to just test it out before you set up the continuous delivery process. Once you've got the manual copying of the data in there, then I would go through and do the uh, AWS code build process to do the continuous delivery. So really a very straightforward process to set up a global scale website that is on par with something like Wall Street Journal or New York Times. Okay, good luck.